Um, afternoon, sir. Afternoon, Ryan. Yes, sir. You joined a bit early. Yeah, I was just doing a bit of exercise, so I want to just <laughs> make sure I come. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Okay, we'll start in a moment, uh, in about a minute. Okay, I think we can start. Okay, so I'm going to go through, um, we're going to start going into human populations today. Um, we knew this was coming uh, for some time now, uh, that we will lead up to human populations. And as we get into human populations, uh, going from ecological populations into human populations, we're also going to start going into the topic of last topic for the year but is also the very first topic for the grade 12 curriculum so it overlaps into grade 12 and a large portion of paper one in grade 12 will be on um on human impact and it starts with this it starts with human populations and the fact that uh, human populations are growing so quickly let me just make sure I am sharing the correct screen here. Uh, yes, I am. Okay. Now, if we take a look at um, you, uh, population growth patterns, um, we call the, the study of human populations, we call it demography. And uh, if you take uh, geography, you would know, you will be familiar with that word. Now, up to the 1800s, um, human populations grew extremely slowly, but um, uh, mainly due to factors like food scarcity, uh, we didn't have as much medical care, so diseases helped keep uh, po human populations very low. But over the last 200 years, the, the human population has started to grow exponentially. So it started to show a J type of curve, in terms of population growth or a, um, a geometric type geometric type growth um, um, yeah geometric uh, this is due to increased natality uh, so a lot a lot more births and decreased mortality rates because of, of a lot more uh, or better medical care and also we are um, producing a lot more food um, for, to feed the population. Human populations are different to natural populations because humans are able to interfere with their natural processes of mortality and natality. We have somewhat of more control over our uh, death and our, over how many births we are, are having as a population. Economically developed countries, um, and the rate of population growth has slowed down and are becoming stable, which is a good thing because they're showing your logistic growth or your S type uh, type of growth. Now, over here we can see um, hominids um, populations, um, hominids including, of course, our, um, our previous um, cousins in, um, in evolution. 
not just homo sapiens, but other hominids as well. And their populations were similar to other large mammals that we shared the environment with previously. Um, and, but, and we kind of took on the, the normal growth patterns. We had an S-type growth pattern that controlled the populations. We had a carrying capacity and we kept at that carrying capacity up to about 200 years ago. This was mainly because, as we said already, uh, food, uh, scarcity, disease uh, also affected that. Uh, so diseases controlled, we, we didn't have such uh, good medical care. So diseases would control numbers. Uh, shelter was also, uh, so we, uh, you would have lived in, um, and this is not up to just the 1800s, uh, this is a bit before that. Uh, if you lived in a cave or you lived wherever, there was a space to stay and we didn't create our own homes yet. Um, that, this is now two, three, four thousand years ago. And predators would have controlled only man's population growth. So we would have been a lot more vulnerable to predation. Uh, um, so our growth pattern would have been more like an S type of curve. But now since the 1800s, you can see there's a large difference. We can see this exponential growth that is happening. Okay, so of course, um, when we take a look at human populations, we take a look at how many births there are, how many deaths there are within a certain time, so birth rate and death rate, but also we take a look at what is the age structure of a population? Um, and we're going to take a look at that today still, uh, when we take a look at uh, population distribution graphs. And then we take a look at how these affect the population growth. So as we said, uh, very slow growth up to the 1800s and then when we started using certain tools and we developed agriculture, certain agricultural practices, we started staying in one place um, for longer and we started controlling our environment more. Uh, creating homes for ourselves, building homes for ourselves, um, not just way before the 1800s, but there seems to be a big step since the 1800s. And the new technology allowed humans to increase their carrying capacity. So when our carrying capacity, if we take a look at our normal, um, at the normal population graph, if our carrying capacity was over there, and we used to have our population, population stabilize over here, we now increase the area's population um, carrying capacity because of agriculture. And so now we tend to do this, we tend to have larger populations because of it. The limiting factors such as food scarcity and disease that initially kept human populations numbers low no longer affected us. And also there's medical care, better medical care, better tools. So that just helps us further increase our comforts to make us live longer, not die as quickly, and then have a more comfortable life. And when we have a more comfortable life, we tend to um, put it plainly, have sex and have babies. Better sanitation as well has reduced death from diseases such as cholera and dysentery. And more recently, the available of, uh, availability sorry, of clean water has reduced the deaths of waterborne diseases. Now, <clears throat> impact of tools on human populations. So, uh, weapons increased, so we can uh, uh, we can use weapons against predation. We also have better tools, we have better drugs, better medical care, and this helps us defend against predators, against parasites, against diseases. And that previously led to a high mortality rate, high deaths. Um, tools allowed humans to build shelters, we could build our own homes uh, that protect us, us more. Um, against the environment and predation. And then also, uh, we 
increasing our agricultural productivity. We're growing our own food instead of just relying on nature to provide us with whatever we need. And so more food being produced, more food and then leads to, of course, um, a longer life expectancy, less deaths. And so this is what we end up with, with an exponential or J-type curve of, uh, of growth. Now, um, if we take a look at the, our current growth, uh, now this is already quite a few uh, years ago. In 2011, we had about 7 billion people on Earth. Today, we have about 8.5 to 9 billion people on Earth. So we're actually reaching this target way before they have predicted in 2040. And remember, we're talking here about billions, not even millions. So even something like the coronavirus is not controlling these numbers as much as we thought it would. Okay, so population growth is slowing down. So hopefully we will reach a new carrying capacity and stabilize our um, stabilize our populations, and they, they're predicting that it would happen by 2050. In economically developed countries, the rate of population growth has slowed down and is already not just becoming stable, but they actually have a negative population growth in certain places uh, because people are deciding not to have kids. Um, at all, or just have one, one kid in a family. And this can be attributed to better education about family planning, improved lifestyles, leading to couples living, having fewer children, access to birth control as important one, so, um, and then better healthcare that allows more children to survive. Okay, so that is uh, what the population growth is looking like for human populations at the moment. I now want to go into um, I want to go into the next section of work, which is age gen gender graphs of human populations. But before we go on to that, I just want to ask: Is there any questions with regards to human population growth at the moment? So, what does a negative population growth mean? Okay, it's meaning the population is becoming smaller not larger. So um, in South Africa, we're still becoming, um, becoming more and more and more people in a single country. And when we have negative population growth, it's population decline, which means that um, the population is becoming smaller um, instead of becoming larger, with less and less people, there's less and less people in the country. And so what is the carrying capacity? Carrying capacity is the amount of um, is the amount of just uh, I just want to uh, create a new screen quickly. Okay. Um, let's explain it to you now. I just want to create a, so I can just draw the proper graph as well. Um, of paper. Page after you like Nia Kani Nani Buta. Yo ye mach. Sorry, my son's outside asking me if he can get some yogurt. Okay, so um, this is time. This is population size. And then normally what we find is we have a line over here, which we call the carrying capacity. And when we have our population growth, we're going to have slow population growth, increasing population growth, slowing down population growth, and then it's going to settle around what we call the carrying capacity. Now, the carrying capacity is the number of organisms that, it can, that an environment can support of that specific organism, and that's the carrying capacity. It's the number of organisms that can be supported by the environment in an area. That's our carrying capacity. Okay. So, and um, 
remember we, we spoke about how we started to control the environment yes. like what type of controlling the environment okay we, like so building a home um uh planting planting plants for food instead of just uh uh taking plants from the environment or taking a plant material from the environment to eat so agriculture is one thing building homes is another one and so we started manipulating our environment instead of just using what we had we created uh, we changed it and we created a better environment for ourselves but not necessarily a better environment for the other animals around us does controlling the environment also include um, herding things like cows and livestock? And then that how is, did the cow... That is part of agriculture. So instead of hunting um, from the environment and um, we would actually grow our own food and we would actually uh, um, keep our own cattle uh, uh, that we will slaughter and eat. So that's also any agricultural practice, anything that has to do with building our homes, that is changing the environment. Also, uh, if we think about our own carbon footprint, um, if we, the fact that we burn fossil fuels to produce electricity, that is also, of course, changing the environment. Okay, so thank you. Sure. Okay, let us move now on to our um, age um, population distribution graphs. Uh, let me just share the correct screen. Okay, so here we go. Just make sure it's a correct general human population. Yes. Okay. So, age and gender distribution graphs. Okay, so uh, we're going to take a look at population pyramids. Um, and we also call it age gender graphs. Uh, that shows the number of people in a five-year age groups um, of a population. The percentage of males and females are, are on opposite sides of such a graph, as you'll see in a moment. The shape of the population pyramid shows three types of population growth. Um, it could be like us, where we are rapidly growing. It could be a stable population, uh, similar to what we find in America. Uh, or we can have a declining population, negative population growth, like we found in most of Europe. Uh, the, the shape of the pyramid is affected by factors such as death from diseases such as AIDS, war and immigration of people into and out of a country. South Africa is an example of a rapidly growing population. Just give me a moment. Um, Dirkie, Papa, gee klas, gee my gekansie, so asjeblief. Okay. Over the past, over the next 20 years, we are expected to slow down our population growth uh, naturally, and uh, this will be due to fertility rates dropping, life expectancy increasing, and infant mortality rate decreasing. Let's take a look at a basic age gender graphs. Now, this is South Africa in 2014. And you can see that we have what we call a very wide base. Let's take a look at what is happening over here. Each column over here is five years. So there's a zero, birth to five years, five to 10 years, 10 to 15 years. This is, just give me a moment, I'm sorry. Okay, sorry about that. Now, um, please note that on my right hand side, I've got the uh, females. On the left hand side, I've got males. Each group over here represents, each uh, bar represents five years. And then what we see over here is typical of a rapidly growing population. <coughs> we have a very wide base at the bottom and a very small top. <clears throat> and 
This is very positive for certain people. For example, me. It's very positive, uh, positive for me. Excuse me. It's very positive for me because, <coughs> sorry. Um, what will happen is as uh, you are in this group over here, and uh, as you are in that group over there at the moment, you're becoming econo economically active in a few years' time, which means that in the end, you support the people at the top, which is in their retirement. Now, by the time I get into my retirement, you're economically active over here, which means that you are supporting my pension. So thank you very much. That is why I, I have dedicated myself to training you guys because one day you're gonna support me economically because you're gonna be contributing to the economy and I'm gonna have a very good pension. Now, if we take a look at some of the other countries, so we talked about South Africa as a developing country with a rapid population growth. This is now um, you, uh, America. You can see the base has become smaller, okay? The middle group is very economically active and our top group is becoming a bit wider. So this is a stable population. They're not increasing their population. They're not decreasing their population. The population numbers are plus minus stable. So we could say that they have reached a carrying capacity. Now let's take a look at, for example, uh, Europe, uh, Germany, for example, this is a declining population. Notice the, the very narrow base at the bottom, the economically stable, the economically active group here in the middle, is very wide and we have a very wide top. So this is, un this is unfortunate for these people that are already at the top. It's also very unfortunate for the people that are in the middle um, because they're not gonna have as many people supporting them once they get into their retirement. But this is typical of what happens in developed countries where we have a declining population. So, Let's compare all three against one another. There we go. There's all three. Wide base, medium base, narrow base. Narrow middle, wide middle, very wide middle. Narrow top, uh, slightly wider top, very wide top compared to the others. And that's that's because of better medical care, better family planning, um, and so forth. Okay, so let's take a look at the implications. Not for me necessarily, because for me it might be very positive, but we do have some factors affecting this, uh, these graphs. Uh, the shape of the pyramids is affected by factors such as death from AIDS, not anymore as much as when I've set up this um, presentation a few years ago, it has simply become a lot less. Immigration, immigration is affecting uh, Europe at the moment very much. So there's a lot of people moving into Europe, increasing their population size, but these don't tend to be younger people. Uh, it, it's not increasing the bottom group, it's increasing that middle group. Uh, we are expected to slow down our, um, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, we are rapidly growing and within uh, with a broader base um, in from zero to 19 years. And then HIV and H previously did affect our growth rate very much. But most HZs are concentrated in the years 20 to 50 years. Why? Because of this. Sex. So if we're having sex, um, we having by uh, we have we the chances of picking up AIDS is a lot more likely. Okay, and it does have a sh uh, effect of the shape on our population pyramid. Infant and child mortality also increases, affecting the shape of the graph from zero to five years, which is babies that are being born 
with AIDS. Okay, so in the future, in the next 20 years, we expect it to slow down our population and become a stable population. Um, and this is due to fertility rates dropping, um, number of children uh, per woman uh, um, in their reproductive years is going to become lower, better family planning, and life expectancy is also going to increase, and infant mortality will decrease. Okay, guys, this is your homework. There's three activities, uh, three activities that you need to do. And what I'll do in tomorrow's lesson is I will just simply discuss these three activities. Uh, so it's for tomorrow's lesson, we will be discussing these three activities. Uh, are there any questions at this stage? So, yes. So if if our USA is has a, a, a steady or a stable population, yes. What does that mean about South Africa? Is it above? Is it above the um the okay. um, what is it called? Uh, we still a developing country. Uh, so we have an increasing, rapidly increasing population growth. We will only become a stable population growth in about 20 years' time. So we should start reflecting America in about 20 years' time. So in about 20 years' time, we will look like America's um, population distribution um, like they are now, currently. Is South Africa above or below the carrying capacity? We are all below, uh, we're theoretically below. If you, if you take a look at our population growth at the moment, we, um, it would say that we are actually below our carrying capacity, but that's not necessarily the case. We might have a rapid population growth um, and we might be exhausting the environment without even realizing it. And that's the thing about human population growth. It doesn't necessarily reflect uh, what the carrying capacity is determining us to be. We might be living far above what our resources are. And unfortunately, that's happening to a lot of developing countries. And for, for more developed countries, like, doesn't it make sense for them to have more babies because they have more money and stuff? It should. But um, what, we, what, what we find is that with more money, lifestyles change. Um, and it, it, it's actually the opposite of what we think it would be. The poorer a country is, the higher the birth rate tends to be, which is, which is very sad because people aren't able to take care of those children. Uh, while we find with developed countries where there's enough resources, People tend to not have kids and not have interest in having kids as much. They'd rather just keep the money to themselves. Um, they're not as worried about having children as, um, as poorer people. And so, um, remember the sketches yesterday? In, in are we going to possibly have a test or are they going to be possibly included in an exam and a question will be asked about the sketches in a type of way? Okay. Um, there's a possibility that you might get a sketch and that you will be able to, you should be able to interpret it. You will not be asked in a test to make such a sketch. Okay, so And... The honey, the honey bee, mm. do, does do all the honey, do all the honey bees in the hive get the royal jelly? No, no, only the queen. Only the queen gets okay, the royal you. jelly, and that's what makes that's what makes her become the queen. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, okay, thank you, guys. Um, are there any more questions? Yes, I, think, I think Tupo has a question. Yes, come in. Um, uh, okay. Um, yes, Ruan, ask your question, and then I'll ask Tepo's, I'll answer Tepo's question on the chat. Oh, all right. So I wanted to ask, um, did you say we're going to do these three activities together as a, 
discussion where you can do in phone work. No, no, no. Please do the activities before we get to tomorrow's lesson, please. All right, so, so all three for tomorrow. Yes. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, Tepo asked that how do we maintain a stable population? Better family planning. Okay, better family planning is the main one. Better family planning, having less kids, is the best way to have a more stable population. Are there any more questions, guys? Okay, then I'm gonna end off today's lesson. Thank you very much. Yep. And I will see you tomorrow. Yes, one more question. So do you know how um, cows came about? How cows came about? Yes. You're asking me the ch uh, chicken or the egg type of question there. <laughs> No, you know so the chicken, just like you know, you know the chicken and the egg question. Um, yes. <laughs> okay, so um, the chicken and the egg uh, is did the chicken come first or did the egg come first? Um, and <laughs> evolutionary, uh, we would say that uh, the egg came first because that egg was laid by something else that wasn't a chicken yet, and it evolved into a chicken. Um, but that is just a little evolutionary fun. Uh, so, um, look, uh, if you're talking about domesticated cows, uh, you've got to remember that they're also mammals. And it's probably um, because it's a reasonably tame type of the bovines are relatively tame. We did start um, keeping them closer and closer to us. And so over time, uh, they become more what we call domesticated. Okay, Ted was asking me about the outcome of yesterday's meeting. I've sent out a survey on the parents' groups. We need to do a little bit more assessment on um, what is happening and who, um, how many people are requesting um, about, uh, um, about having direct face-to-face -face lessons at school. Uh, but there are various complications. Firstly, uh, the transport arrangements for some people will be very difficult if we end school later at this stage. Um, so your parents will have to pick you up. Um, in that case, we can't change the taxi and bus uh, services at the moment. Um, also, we need to apply with the department uh, if we want to have, if we want to stay um, later after two um, at HP at the moment. Um, it's very complicated because of lockdown, which hopefully ends very soon now, so that's another issue. Um, uh, but I did send out a survey, and depending on what the survey is going to uh, do, we'll decide which route of action to take. But for now, it will be status quo, and we'll have a Zoom lesson e every afternoon until further notice. Um, and then we will also, like we are doing at the moment, post those lessons onto the Google Classroom. So for those who cannot attend the lessons during the time now, they can uh, then, um, just download the lesson the next day at school. Okay, thank you guys. I'm gonna end off the meeting. Thank you very much. And I will see you tomorrow. Please do these three activities. Thank you, sir.